But I think my daddy does. Oh my, there's so much good firewood right here. up adventure agents agent tex here and agent rainbow hey agent rainbow how you doing what do you see nothing okay <laughs> we have these new adventure agents binoculars okay agents so in honor of baby cedar here that's agent rainbow's birth name we picked up a truckload of cedar boughs here <laughs> and we are going to use them to cover our bushcraft shelter <laughs> Oh, goodness. Okay, Agent Rainbow. So many of you may remember this is the bushcraft shelter that we built with the Johnsons. This was our shelter. And these ferns right here, these brackens that we put on here, they just completely wilted and weathered away. So there's, there's no coating here almost. It's just the sticks. But we have so many of these cedar boughs that we got from our neighbor. He cut down a giant cedar tree and he let us pick up as many of the cedar boughs as we wanted. And we are going to deck out the outside of this thing with those cedar boughs. And the plan is for me and Agent Axe to spend the night here and camp out tonight in the shelter. But Agent Trinity has not been feeling well. And so she may need some help tonight. I may not be able to spend the night here. We'll see how it goes. next to cedar. Mm, what do you think of cedar tree smell? That looks so good. That looks amazing. It does look good. <laughs> All right, so it is so hot out here right now. <sighs> I am already so hot. <laughs> Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to finish this in a little bit, but first we're going to go head to our neighbor Al's pond and we are going to have a cool down session. I'm my shoulder. Pull the rope in. I got it. Twice this big. Thank you. Go Boy, it's great having a neighbor like Al. You can take boat rides in his pond, pick huckleberries from his bushes. You paddle that side, I paddle <gasps> Tracker wants to wait, what if we let her get it on the wall? <laughs> <laughs> Salmon berries. Mm. You want to be over here because this is. Whoa. Hold me! Hold you! <laughs> oh my! That's too cold? No, I'm just. I'm going to go on the other part. Ah. Uh. I'm going to go on this side over here. That's giant. What is Look it? At that. Look at that. That's alive. Look at that. Oh, wow. Check it out. That is giant. <laughs> oh my, wait, let's see if we can that. Is that is huge. Look at that, that's like... Wow. Oh, wow, River, look at it. That is uh -huh. massive. Those are like oh my. Yeah, okay, be careful. Let's not, let's I'm be very careful. Like, ah. I don't want to hurt it. 
I can barely hold up my car. <laughs> yeah, so, so strong. Daddy, it's so powerful. Big. Daddy, I'm gonna... Look at my muscles. <laughs> what do you think of that, Agent Rainbow? What do you think of that? Can I let it pinch me? <laughs> yeah, I do not want this thing to pinch me. Can I touch it too? That's yeah, you touch I'm touch that tail careful. is so meaty. I bet that tail could go like. All right, there you go, buddy. Right All right, survival baby, you want to see if you can survive with the crawdads? Put your feet in the water. Oh, is that too cold? Oh, he doesn't like it. <laughs> this is an amazing cedar tree right here. I'm so grateful for this precious life. You wonderful rainbow baby. You ready to go build a shelter? You come help us? Sure, I'll help you, Dad. But I might have to take a nap first. Okay, so you'll never guess what we have inside this box. Agent X! Yeah? You coming? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, you got the worms? Mm -hmm. He's got the worms, okay. We have... Baby birds. Here. Baby birds. We have baby, baby birds. birds here. Look at that. So... Can you hold it, Dad? Neat. So, mm -hmm. Agent X is making a video for his channel. Dad, can I hold it? Agent Go Axe. Close. I'll put a link in the description down below to that. And he's making a video of how he is feeding Bird. these birds. So these birds were actually up in the giant, a uh, hundred plus feet tall cedar tree that our neighbor cut down to get these cedar boughs right here that we're going to use for our shelter. And we were walking around at the bottom of the tree after he'd cut it all up. It, it had been hours. And I started hearing these like beep, beep, beep noises. And it was these little birds. And we found oh. his nest. Oh, look at too. that. Look at that. See that? Uh -huh. That means they're hungry. Okay, feed them. <laughs> that you do. So, so they just yep. ran. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, they're both getting. Mm -hmm. oh, that they ate the worm. Which one? The. How do you tell which one's which? <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Oh, it just I got pooped. A, I got, a oh, bunch. it pooped. Oh, my gosh. So, also, every time they eat, like, as soon as they eat some worms, they poop immediately. It pooped earlier, dude. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do. One of them died. There was another one, and it died. So, but these two were perfectly fine. But these fine. two are perfectly fine. And so, we found the nest. Look at that nest. It's a beautifully constructed nest. I think these are stellar blue jays but and look at their clothes they're definitely toast they're, unless oh. we take care of them so we're gonna try to take care of them we're keeping them warm at night I don't know. we'll see what happens So I have a really bad headache and I can be a bit impatient and huh, stupid, I think, whenever I have headaches. So hopefully we do all this and nothing bad happens. I have to be extra careful. So these cedar limbs have these incredible curves in them. Look at that. It's like an arch, and you can make a really cool, uh, I think, roof or some kind of shelter. I don't know. Anyways, I got a bunch of these limbs that are curved. I'm going to save them for later. Maybe we'll do something cool with them on another video. This one's huge. Maybe I should just set Here. it down. Why don't you put these inside of the box? In, into there, inside of there. Put them in the shelter in there. But I think my daddy does. Oh my, there's so much good firewood right here. Oh! Ah! 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 There's a big 
hornet's nest right there and the agent axe just got stung like crazy oh, this day might be over let's go see how he's doing these three oh they don't hurt when Can i don't see your head oh, pick an egg. one right there <laughs> One right there. One. This one hurts the most. You've it's got, just right there. It feels like fire. You've got one right there. Two, three, right, let's four, go, huh? five, six, seven, oh, yeah. eight. Yeah. Uh, eight, nine, right there. Oh, you get you on your face? Oh man! Wow. Wait, let me see on the GoPro two screen. on your eye. Oh my. Oh my goodness. One, two, three, four, five, six, wow. Nine, I. I, I feel so bad, Agent X. I I was immediately thinking, oh, he's being over dramatic here. <laughs> I thought there was like some bugs, and you're like screaming at the top. Of you're like, there's some bugs, you know? Oh my goodness! And then <laughs> I saw the order. The whole swarm of bees. <laughs> All right, Agent. You're well, like, hey, it's just a couple of we are I'm like, definitely. I'm about to die. I'm not there's gonna. There's a couple hundred bees. Yeah. I mean, I'll go back there, but not tonight because we've really angered those hornets. And so we probably don't want to go back there for, for a day or so to let them collect themselves and then... No, we should go anyway, there so. and we should just like... Well, no, we shouldn't hurt them because look, how many times have we been there? We built that entire shelter and they never, they never bothered us, right? They could have made it in the last week i don't think so i think they were already there and nobody ever went to that side of the, the nurse log and started messing with it so that's that's why so you know i think most of the time you leave nature alone nature leave leave you alone um most of the time sometimes it's out to get you because it wants oh to eat you <laughs> but hornets are not out to get you to eat you they are only defending their nest so we stay away from our nest i think we'll be okay but um, we're definitely gonna leave them alone for a while. So we'll see ya on the other side whenever we get back to this project. Dude, that's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Does it hurt? Mm -hmm. Man, I'm sorry, X. I can barely see out of it. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> My right eye is, I'm legally blind in it, so he's gonna experience what it's like to be me. <laughs> for a while, I guess. I don't know. Hopefully, it goes away by tomorrow. So I'm making him where we're, we're gonna bury the birds because they died. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. Is that better? Hey everybody. I'm I'm upset right now because I want my daddy to hold me. Okay, I'll hold you. I'll hold you. Okay. I got you. I got you. Hey Brock. If we left them, no matter what, they would have died too. Yeah, you're right. You're right. If we had left the birds on the ground by that tree, no matter what, they would have died. Hey, Cedar, we're going to bury the birds, okay? Okay? All right, Agent Rainbow. You got the shovel, Agent Axe? Mm -hmm. How's your eye doing? Better. It is better. Better than yesterday. So since the baby birds were born in a cedar tree, I was thinking that we could bury them in their nest at the base of a cedar tree. This big, beautiful right. cedar tree right here. We're, right where this end Can I bury him? Yeah, that's okay. good, right there. Mm -hmm. There's already a hole right here. Yeah, oh, oh poor Daddy, cedar. Daddy, can I put them what in? What is it? Can I put them in? Yes, you can put them in. Me too. All right, birds, well, we tried to save you, but uh, what they really needed was their mother, right? And their father. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to take him back to Agent Trudy. Well, I think he's hungry. Are you hungry? Do you want some milk from the wild woman? Yeah, he's so cute. So what do you think? Do you think the life of those two birds is valuable what that we buried? Mm -hmm. You think so? Mm -hmm. uh, how valuable do you think those birds' lives were? What do you think? Just about as valuable as every other bird. About as valuable as every other bird, right? So. The bird's value, the life's value is of equal value, you'd say. Okay. Do you think that the bird is as valuable as uh, Agent Rainbow? No. Oh, no? Okay, what about as valuable as Agent Trapper? No. The bird, those two birds' life 
were not as valuable as Agent Tracker's life. If Agent okay. Tracker died, I would probably be screaming for the next couple right. of days. <laughs> so you're saying that Agent Tracker's life is more valuable to you? Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, and so, <clears throat> do you think that if if uh, one of us died, that uh, those birds, if they could, if they had the strength, do you think that those birds would try to bury us? No. Out of respect for our bodies and for our lives? No. You don't think so? Even if they were strong enough to pick us up and do that? You don't think those one of those birds would do that? No. Yeah. Interesting, isn't that? So why is it that we buried those birds? Why, why did we do that? Because, because the birds are in nature because too. We because we can, yes, but even if the birds could, uh, we agreed that they probably wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Because right? also, we. So also, do you think. Also, they live in nature and we don't. Right. Do you think any animal would, out of respect for uh, one of our lives, bury us? Any animal at all? Maybe a bird. Dig a grade for like us? Maybe, uh, may maybe, maybe. So it, if any animal would, maybe a dog would, potentially. Right, so uh, why do you think that is? Do you think it, it, it has to do with because dogs? Because dogs also are around humans more. Yes, they are, for sure. In fact, dogs wouldn't be, wouldn't actually exist unless humans did because we actually uh, bred them from wolves. So you two have heard of the, the word God, right? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, okay. And so, there's this idea that's very, very old. And this idea is that there is a being who knows everything. Mm -hmm. All the time, always. And this being cares it would be enough for me to about you. everything and everyone. And there's a man named Jesus who lived a long time ago, or Yeshua, and somebody said that he said something that I find very interesting about this being that most of you uh, are, that most of you know as God or have heard of as God, and that this being cares so much for everything that not even one single sparrow can fall from the sky. Just like those two birds fell from the sky, fell from that tree after they cut it down, that not even one single one of those birds can fall from the sky without this being caring about and being aware of it. Just think about that for a minute. Think about not all the birds and all the creatures and all the organisms, microscopic. Billions, trillions, countless over the over. That would uh, give me a headache began. to know about all. Yeah, right. It's like it's incalculable, and that that this being could care about all of those creatures and organisms throughout all time. So much so that they are aware of if it fell from the sky and died, or fell from a tree in this instance. What do you think of it? You think that's possible? Not really. You don't think so? But there's things that you can do that are impossible. <laughs> well, you know, I actually believe that that is possible. In fact, I think that it's more than possible. Um, and so maybe we'll talk more about that one day. But I find that really interesting. It's impossible for any being on this planet. Well, the idea of this being is that they are not of this planet. In fact, the idea of this being is that they cause this planet to exist. Oh, that, everything that's that what exists. I'm saying. Not, no being on this planet could do that. Well, also the idea is that this being could be wherever they want to be. They can be on this planet. In fact, they're technically everywhere. In the middle of the Earth. All at once. And and nowhere specifically. <laughs> Is that confusing? Nowhere and everywhere. Nowhere and everywhere. Well, nowhere specific. It's not like they're right there, or they're 
Oh, they're right here. Here they you are. Dropped their marshmallow. Uh, mine got dropped in the sand, so I had to. It was just a little piece of it. What a waste, Agent that X says. That got so big. <laughs> so what about you, Agent Hummingbird? Do you think that it's possible for a being to exist that can know and care about every single little thing that we could possibly imagine? Yeah. You do? Yeah. You think so? Well, not like anyone, like not this type of human being. Right, yeah. Well, there's also a story, and that story is about a man named Yeshua, or Jesus. Like in the Greek gods, there's like the gods that can manifest themselves in like a bunch of different places at yep. the same time. Yep, and that is the story of this man Yeshua, or Jesus, and that is that this man actually was this being, God. That this man, that God became a man. What do you think of that? I've heard that the story is that Jesus was his son. Yes, but but they're one and the same in the story as well. Is that confusing? Kind of confusing? <laughs> but I find it really, really interesting. I find it very, very interesting. And there's also someone who said something a long time ago about this being that most of you the word you know of is God when you hear about them. And that is that God is love. And the word love there, the translation of it in Greek is... In Greek? Yeah, it's unconditional love. It's just complete and unconditional, meaning there is no condition. You don't have to do anything to gain the love of this being simply by existing. Your very existence I thought Greek had different is a sign. Gods. The Greeks did have very different gods. Very different. Yeah. Many different gods. And that's another thing that I find really, really interesting is that Agent Axe is reading a book about that that's a recreation the first two of were Greek gods, the Greek god mythology. That third one was um, the Egyptian gods, the fourth one was more Greek gods, and the fifth one that I'm mm -hmm. almost done with now is Norse gods. Yep. So like Thor and Loki and... Mm -hmm. So what's interesting is that almost every civilization of humankind has had some sort of theory or ideas about this being or these or multiple beings called God. And the tradition where Yeshua comes in is the Judeo-Christian tradition, is what it's called. Meaning, it comes from Judaism, originally, the Jews. In fact, Jesus was a Jew, what, what uh, people would consider a Jew. That's his nationality. And so, all my life agents, I found this concept, this idea, that there is a being that exists, that caused both me and everything else that I see, hear, touch, feel, or experience, or conceive of, that they caused all of this to exist, and that they are continuously allowing all of this to exist. I find that very interesting. And there's one more thing that the Judeo-Christian tradition talks about, and that is that this being wants to have a very, very close relationship with you. With you? With Every all of you. And specifically with human beings. The story where the man Yeshua talks about not even a single bird can fall from the sky without this being caring and knowing about it. Then, then they said, how much more do they care about you? If they care that much about a little bird, how much more do they care about you? Oh. Lots of millions of times. <laughs> yeah. And, but why is it? Why should this being care more about you than a bird? What's because different? Uh, what's so special about me. you? We oh, wow. are... Millipede. We are... What's that word? Um, something like self-conscious? Yes. That 
there you go. Nice. That is something that 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 is unique to humans is that we are particularly self-conscious or self-aware. Dogs. Um, uh, not 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 like humans. Uh, no, not I mean, like more like humans, humans but we don't know how much of like, that just has to do with human imprinting. Humans imprinting on. Them. So we just identified something that is unique about humans, and that is self that self-conscious. Self and that is that earlier with the bird, what did we identify that's unique about humans? We are I know something unique birds. about the bird that humans don't have. What? It has talons, it has feet. <laughs> yeah, right. It has wings, yes. it can fly. <laughs> <laughs> but we're talking it about something, something, that, something that's a bit less obvious, something that you can, can't exactly see. Something that we Our might DNA. consider to be invisible. Our DNA. Well, even that you can see under a microscope or a, or a powerful enough microscope, but but we identified that humans that a bird wouldn't bury us humans, but for whatever reason, we took the bird in, took care of it, tried to save its life, and after even after it died, it's just a dead body. Why would we care about that dead body enough to bury it? Why would we do that? Because, because the word because is like we, right in the back of my mind. Because, um. You know, you guys, these questions are so deep. You don't necessarily have to have it. I don't no. even know exactly the no, answer. No, I know the answer. I just, it's a word, but I, it's like way in the back of my mind. Empathy? No. Partly. Yeah, but we can empathize with the bird. We can imagine that we were a bird, and if we were a bird and we fell out of a tree like yeah, that, and our mom what, and dad. That's what I meant. The like that word for that. Uh huh. That well, love, empathy. Would we want yeah, someone? Because, because when it died, because we had it for uh -huh. a little bit, but it died, and then. If I was a little bird chick falling from the tree. Would you want someone to take care of you? Yeah. You yeah, would? but I think yeah. since I would be in the human mind, I think I would. <laughs> <laughs> so, we would want that, and because we know we would want that, we imagine that the bird might want that, mm -hmm. and then we do that for the bird. Yeah, but, but the bird wouldn't necessarily but, want us to bury it. It yeah. could want us to put it in the nest high up in the tree. Yeah, that is something that is very unique to humans, is that we have the ability to imagination. imagine. Imagination, we have imagination. Imagination, yes, and it's just a tool we can use. Our imaginations are a tool we can use to love other people and to love other creatures. Our imaginations are also a tool that we can use to do the opposite, though. We can be uniquely terrible, hateful. Yeah for real though. Horrible, terrible creatures. We can do horrible things. But we Whereas can also uniquely well, do we, incredible things. And that, I believe, is one of the biggest, we can kill a fish slowly, and that would be mean, right? Mm -hmm. But earlier we killed the fish really fast, right? Mm -hmm. Because we imagine if I was a fish and something was gonna kill me and eat me, I would rather be killed quickly, right? And I so would rather just we not give, be killed. That's true, but that's the way it is. <laughs> if but, I was a fish in a human mind, what I would do is I would just look at you and then go, <laughs> But we need the fish to live. And so that's how it is. The fish eats other things that don't want it to eat up. That fish thought that the lure was some kind of creature, that it was trying to run away. And the fish is like, I'm going to eat you. No mercy, I'm gonna swallow you whole and you're gonna die while you're being digested in my stomach. I'm not gonna kill you first. I'm gonna let you die slowly in my stomach while you're being digested. <laughs> That's a terrible way to die, right? Mm -hmm. But the fish doesn't care, mm -hmm. but humans can care. And that is one of the things that makes us unique and special. And that is one of the traits that I believe that humanity has that makes humanity particularly special, that makes humans particularly special. And for that reason, this being that I call love, that I believe caused us to exist and sustains our existence, 
um, has a very special care for us humans. That's what I believe. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. You know what? You all are developing your beliefs and mindsets on these things. And you don't have to say what you think right now. You just, it's up to you to develop these things. I'm going right? to say what I think right now. What do you think? I like Pokemon. <laughs> I think that I like great. Minecraft and Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? And I believe. And the PC. And the PC. I believe that this being knew that you would like Pokemon. And this being caused the scenario to exist in which the individuals who created Pokemon, who used their imaginations and, and came Minecraft. up with this, and were Minecraft. able to do that so that you could enjoy and it. Minecraft. And lots of other people. And, and many other people. Millions. I believe Trust. that. And so in that way, Billions. through other people, Billions. this being can love Billions. you. Does that I make sense? I did that. Have you After given me more games? <laughs> And so, agents, whenever we say life's an adventure and love is the key and love is a who and love loves you, that's a little bit more <laughs> description about what it is exactly that we believe. Love loves through other people. Through me. Through you. Through Agent Axe. Through, what's his name? H H Hitori Agent Hashimoto? No. It, the, it's the creator of Pokemon. No, it was like... Sh n n we're butchering this. We're, we're really butchering this. Nikki Toro, I think. Something like, Something that. like that. Yeah, 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 we're, we're butchering this. There's millions <laughs> of other Japanese yes. names. Yeah. Um, he used his imagination to create something that he imagined other people would enjoy. And we love you all by using our imaginations to create films and videos that we imagine you enjoy. That's how we love you. And not the inventor of Minecraft. All right, so what do you say we head back and get that shelter fixed up with the cedar boughs? Yeah, wait, point again? Point again? <laughs> <laughs> wait, no, let me bite it though. Ah, you bit it off, you monster. <laughs> It's right over here. What is here? You see it? See it right there? Right there. Little white thing. That's big huge. Thing. It's it's really big. It is really big. Stay there, Agent Hummingbird. Okay. Don't come any closer. I think if we leave it alone, they'll leave us alone. Mm -hmm. So if we just stay over there, we won't get stung. Yeah. Let's camp here. You want to? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Your eyes looking better. Let me see. Wow, it's looking a lot better. Even the wasps are like this morning. See what we did to you. <laughs> Don't get near us. Yeah, just a warning. It's another thing about nature. See, they play fair, for the most part, right? They're not out to get you just for the sake of getting you. But humans, sometimes they can be out to get you just for the sake of getting you, and that's kind of what we call evil. But wasps, it's just their way. Just what they do, they're defending their nest for the most part. show you my gate that I made. So right now I'm gonna open the gate. Go in. That's the gate you Go made? Go in, Daddy. Alright. Oh. Close the gate. That's a great gate. Bye-bye! Hey, let me out! Come back here! 
It looks amazing. I know, isn't it cool? It's gonna turn like a light brown color. This place is just great. So there's a lot of ways to cook a fish, but with these trout, I just love to get a sharp stick. I like to stick it through the mouth and all the way up into this area, and that works so good for cooking these trout. So push it through. Oh, there. Oh, oh. There we go. Keep going. Remember that time we ate it raw? We ate some of it raw? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> You know that fish is getting done when you can feel the sizzle, the sizzle through the stick. It, it, the vibrations go through the stick and you can literally this? feel it. All right, that fish is done. Okay. I'm oh, the well, eyeball. Me I don't too. Think there's an eyeball. Oh yeah, there's no eyeball. Oh. oh. Here you go. Yeah, she can have that. <laughs> it's only red likes the eyeball. What do you think? Mm. You like it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So real quick, are we? I feel not hungry anymore. Are we grateful for this fish? Yeah. Yeah? We're grateful for this fish. We are. There's fish juice right there. We are there. so grateful for this fish and mm. its life will become our the life. skin. Through death. Hey, what do you think about that? Interesting. Mm. Death and life intertwined. So, oh. Asian hummingbird and Asian axe. Oh, this is really good fish. I, I only had two pieces. Okay, all right. I only had two Everybody pieces. Everybody will get enough. Do you think that just because... Agent Tex believes something, that that means that it's true? No. That it's actually reality? Mm -mm. No? Okay. Do you think that mm, if I believe that this stick was going to do a double, triple backflip and then smack me in the face in two seconds... One, two. <laughs> do you think that that actually means that it would happen? No. Mm -mm. No, not necessarily. <laughs> One, two. Like oh, <laughs> it's doing it. A double, a triple backflip, yeah. mm -hmm. and then it's going to smack you in the face. Yep. Just because I believe that there is a being that caused me and all of us to exist, and that that being cares mm -hmm. more than we could ever imagine for us, that being would do anything to have a loving relationship with us, and that that being was love themselves. The fact that mm -hmm. I believe that doesn't make it reality. Nope. And so that's why it's important that you all have to choose what you believe for your own selves. Yeah. Right? Well, you were right about the double, triple, black flip and smack it on the face. <laughs> what did I know? <laughs> yeah, it did it. So that's why I always say, that's what I believe. Because that's what I believe doesn't hurt you for me to say that, does it? It might offend some people that I believe that, but um, they're free to choose what they believe. It and some of you all might you. believe something very different than that. And that doesn't mean that I don't like you or respect you. I could totally respect you and your beliefs as well. Yep. Because I believe I am called to share the love that I've been given, the part of that being. Yeah. The love that I believe Faven needs to come and eat this fish head with everyone around me in the best way I can. Yep, we need to feed this to Faven. Faven! Oh. Mama, don't Do you want the fish head? Faven like wants the fish head. Good job. Like, I want the Good whole doggy stick. tracker. Good doggy tracker. There you go. He's trying to eat the whole thing up. <laughs>
Okay, so the trout obviously was not enough for us to have a meal. So, so Agent Trinity made us a fantastic salmon filet here. We got broccoli from our garden. Oh yeah, is that good? Good stuff. We have a delicious salad from our garden here that Agent Trinity made. Oh, that's my plate right there. Mm. Salad's my favorite. Uh, thank you so Hi. much for making that delicious food. Hi. Of course. It's and here's Agent Rainbow. How you doing, what are you doing, Cedar? One hundred, mommy. Cedar, oh, Cedar has been sleeping all day long. Oh no, is he gonna keep you up all night? I don't know, I hope not because I did not nap uh, with him. Well, it's a good thing that I'm gonna be camping with Agent X so I don't get kept up all night. <laughs> what? That's right. Just kidding. Agent Hummingbird is super excited. She keeps running over to me and saying, give me another multiplication problem. Give me another one. Okay, what's seven times five? 35. Yeah, give me five. You, so you, you think you think Agent? Oh, yeah. You think Sissy's a, a math whiz? Huh? Yeah, she said she wants to hurry up and get into our, our math book, mommy. He's so stinky cute. Oh my goodness. Are you gonna go fishing? Fifty. Sometimes. Fifty. I'm gonna go fishing with you. Hi, mommy. I am my sister. Tell me another one. Tell me another one. <laughs> Alright, so this bushcraft shelter has a home theater system. Agent X built like a little frame back there. We're gonna do a little father-son movie night here in the bushcraft shelter. I love you, Agent X. He has waited so long. He has done so well. It's been a long time since we did a father-son overnight camping, and we've been waiting on Agent Trinity to have agent rainbow for agent rainbow to be out safe in the world and we are so grateful that that is the case now and agent x is so grateful that we finally get to do this father-son um camping trip here <laughs> we're close by we're within walkie-talkie range of agent trinity so i'm gonna check in on her and make sure this signal it'll works. take like two minutes or three minutes to run to her yeah it wouldn't take too long to get to her if we had to go down there hey agent trinity how you doing can you hear me good over <laughs> nice. It's like, all right. I feel so much. I have several baby, and I uh, feel so much better now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Well, Agent Tracker's licking her butt right now, so it's all good. <laughs> all right. Well, love you, Agent Hummingbird, Agent Trinity, and Agent Rainbow. Good night. All right. We love you too. Sorry, Faven. You're. It's not cute when you do anything yeah. that has to do with. <laughs> nope. Pooping. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, she's Everything at it again. Oh. All right, right. What do you want hey. to say? Night. Love, Love you. Love you. All right, start the movie. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Hopefully, I like this movie. We'll see. Movie's over. Uh -huh. Good movie. Good, good movie. The good guys won. Good Always. guys and girls won. Every single time. Good Pokemon won. <laughs> mm. Good night, Tracker. Good night, Tracker. Oh, she's laying her head over you. Yeah. This place is pretty cool. Look at this. We got that for the back wall. Who knows what the heck's going to crawl out of there tonight. And what for the back wall? Get in bed with us. Uh, let me see. <laughs> a giant rotten log over there. All right. Well. Good night. Good See night. you in the morning. Uh, Love you, Agent X. Uh -huh. I'm so glad that uh, we got to do this together, finally. Uh -huh. It's taken a long time. We even ate a fish. We even ate a fish. Yep. All right, we'll see you in the morning. Damn. Yeah. She snuck in between us. I know. <laughs> she protected this one night long. Oh, oh. So good. Okay, Doki. <laughs> Well, it's a beautiful morning out here. 
This thing is really cool. Just looking up, light filtering in. I feel super cozy. It's like we're in a little cave, you know? I love it. It's great. I'm so grateful. So grateful. I'm so grateful for you. And for Fabian. Aiden. Oh, what are you looking at your butt again? <laughs> you butt looker. Grateful for this. We slept right next to... Big pretty, rotten log. Big rotten log tree. Nothing and, came and slept with us except for Faven. We didn't even get stung by hornets. Only Faven slept with us in the night. So, <laughs> no, Faven stuck in between us. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you yeah. said something was going to sneak in between us. <laughs> Your eyes doing better. Mm-hmm. All right, well, I think this adventure has come to an end. All right, Agents, remember, life's an adventure. Love is a who. Love is a who. And love and loves you. Even if, you. even if you're a butt licker. <laughs> love loves you. <laughs> Agent Tracker butt licker sound out. <laughs> Agent Tech's out. Agent X out. <laughs>